Seismologist Huger Beats, who predicted the tragedy in Turkey, warned of a mega earthquake in March. Dutch seismologist Frank Huger Beats, who predicted the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, said that in March there will be a new mega earthquake on Earth. The report of the Solar System Geometry Survey, where the scientist works, said that the convergence of the planets on March the 2nd and 5th could lead to a very large seismic activity. A series of earthquakes could occur from March the 3rd to 7, 2023. The magnitude of underground shocks could reach 8.5 and higher. The institute has also named the regions that fall into the so called red zone, the south of Japan, Indonesia, Pakistan, Greece, Portugal and part of North America. Russia is also on the list. Frank Hujabits believes that a devastating earthquake could occur on the Kuril Islands. An earthquake of magnitude 6.3 occurred off the coast of Papua New Guinea. An earthquake of magnitude 6.3 was registered off the coast of Papua New Guinea on Wednesday. This was reported by the Euro Mediterranean Seismological Center. According to this information the epicenter of this earthquake was at 67.11 miles to the north, west from Kim Tan, which is a home for about 18.8 thousand people. The source was located at a depth of 377.17 miles. There was no information about destructions and victims. No tsunami threat was declared. Cyclone Judy is strengthened to a third category by destructive winds. Vanuatu has dramatic scenes of tropical Cyclone Judy's destructive hurricane, force winds bursting through, uprooting trees. Judy is a Category 3 storm, but it is forecast to strengthen to Category 4 later Tuesday. Destructive gale force winds and flooding are also expected. Destructive gale force winds affected the northern provinces of Torber, Sanmar, Panama and Malampur on Tuesday. The cyclone hits the northern provinces of Vanuatu, moving southward. Red notices are in effect for Panama, Malampur, Shfer and Tafer. The Vanuatu Met Service forecast that destructive hurricane winds of 93.21 mph, gusting to 124.27 mph, would affect the central and southern islands, while destructive storm force winds of 68.35 mph, gusting to 714.58 mph, would affect 80 nautical. Northeast and southeast of the system center. The report said Judy was near the capital, Port VR. Air Vanuatu has cancelled all domestic and international flights. They will resume on Wednesday. Banks closed their doors early and sent staff home, while boarding schools in the capital also sent students home. Commercial vessels were called by port and maritime departments to find safe anchorage after the Weather Service issued a high seas warning for Vanuatu's open coastal waters. The National Disaster Management Office has already set up evacuation centers in Port Vili, but for the rest of Afate Island and other offshore islands, the office is working closely with the Vanuatu Christian Council of Churches to use church buildings as evacuation centers. The National Disaster Management Office coordinator from the evacuation centers has asked people across the country to respect and take seriously the warnings given by the weather department. Port Villa was severely damaged by tropical cyclone Pam in 2015, which was a Category 5 cyclone. Tornadoes and strong winds have hit the central United States. After at least nine tornadoes were reported in the central United States, a flurry of snow, rain and high winds is expected from the west coast to the Great Lakes, with some still without power after a similar string of severe weather. As of Monday afternoon, more than 300,000 homes and businesses in the United States were without power. Two-thirds of the outages occurred in Michigan, which is preparing for another round of ice and snow. Memphis, Texas, recorded wind gusts of 113.71 mph, the equivalent of sustained winds in a Category 3 hurricane. 
Overturned cars and fallen trees dotted the areas where roofs were blown off homes early Monday morning, the 27th of February. According to a preliminary study by the National Weather Service in Norman, the tornado Sunday night had at least an F2. According to the Weather Service, the research team will continue to survey the path where significant damage was reported, and more information on wind speed, path length and width of the tornado will be available once the study is completed. The storm is also expected to continue through the 28th of February, causing traffic delays for millions of people. Climate change is likely to increase the risk of damaging winds from tropical systems for millions of homes and businesses along the East Coast and Gulf Coast. Overall, expected average annual losses from this risk will rise from $18.5 billion to $19.9 billion over the next 30 years, and 13. For million properties are likely to face tropical cyclone winds that currently face no such risk. Large-scale wildfires have broken out in eastern Cuba. Large wildfires have broken out in eastern Cuba, shifting toward populated areas. The fire has destroyed more than 4,942 acres of forest, including plantations and coffee crops. Not only firefighters but also soldiers have been deployed to extinguish the fire. The fire moved from Menchura Pilato National Park to the province of Santiago de Cuba, where the densely populated city of the same name is located. The fires broke out on the 18th of February, hampered by unfavorable conditions and difficult terrain. Losses are already significant, and it could take years to rebuild the area. The death toll from torrential rains in Brazil has reached 65. The death toll from floods and landslides on the coast of the Brazilian state of Sao Paulo, caused by torrential rains, has risen to 65. Among the dead are 19 miners. Army troops, firefighters, volunteers and rescue workers continue to search for the missing. Most of the victims lived in poor neighborhoods in high, risk areas on the slopes of the Sierra de March mountain range, near the Barra do Sarai beach in San Sebastian. About 2,440 people had to be evacuated because of the risk of more landslides. A number of coastal cities experienced record rainfall on the 19th of February, with twice as much rainfall in just 24 hours in some places as usual in February. About 4 million Brazilians live in 14,000 areas at risk of natural disasters.